Hey everyone, I'm Drew from MakerMaid, and let's calibrate my M2. Here's the thing, when you go to plug in your M2, be sure that you're standing right next to the power source when you plug it in through USB, and then you plug it in your do board, because if one of the motors are not plugged in all the way, it might do some wonky stuff. It might just start moving and start moving around. So you wanna make sure that you can unplug it right away and then check all of those connections, both in your do board and also plugged into each one of your motors, your X, Y, and your Z motor to make sure that they're all plugged all the way in. So once we have them all plugged in, we'll go ahead and connect it to Makerverse. So once we have our board plugged into our computer, we're gonna click this refresh button right here and it will cl click on, you can click on this drop down menu and see there are these different connections. So we want to click on the Arduino one. If we click on something else and try to say open, it might give you an error or it won't give you a readout. We wanna make sure that we click on the correct one. So we wanna click on the one that says Arduino. You can even leave this connect automatically connected if you wanna stay connected anytime. And then when we click open, you'll get this readout right here of all the information on your Arduino. This is exactly what we wanna see. We wanna see all of this info. So that means that it's all plugged in exactly like it should be. So if you hear a ringing sound, that's good. That's a good thing. That means everything is connected exactly how it should be. So the first thing that we wanna do is set our calibration settings. So if we scroll down here, we can see that there's this M2 configuration area, but these are locked. It's normal for it to be locked. So we have to go and unlock it. So we're gonna click right up here in the top right and unlock it. Then once it's unlocked, we are gonna set each one of these to configure for our M2. So my workspace is a little smaller. I have a four by four workspace in my studio room. So when you go to change size here, it might already be set by your four by eight. So we just wanna measure our entire cutting area. And this is where you can change it for different size chains, no matter what you're using. So the M2 knows how large the area is. So if you can change this to inches, if you want, you can put 48 inches in there. And then when I click save, you'll see that it automatically converted it to millimeters. That's what these are. So those are my workspace settings. Now, the next thing that you wanna do is to set your machine settings. So this is your distance between your motors and your motor offset. So once we click edit, we are presented with two different values, our distance between motors and our motor offset. Now our distance between motors is actually from the eight o'clock position on our left motor to the four o'clock position on our right motor of the gear. So we need to get that all the way across. And this value is in there. It's probably gonna be pretty close to yours if you're doing the normal four by eight setup. You'll see that that configuration is gonna be pretty close to normal. Mine is a little bit different. So mine is only uh, 1810 millimeters because I've stretched mine all the way across and it's only that four by four area. I only have a six foot top beam. So mine's a little bit different. And then the next one, the motor offset, that is the difference between the chain. If the chain was stretched all the way across on the top, so if it was taut all the way across to the top of your wasteboard. So there are a couple different ways that you can go about it. You can measure the distance from your gear down to your board and then go from the center to where your wasteboard is and then stretch it down. You can stretch something across to make sure that it's level to be measured down to make sure we get that correct motor offset. So we get that motor offset on mine it's 442 millimeters is how far my chain is. As I said, mine's a little bit smaller. So you wanna make sure that you get those values pretty close to where they need to be. So now we'll hit save. And then the last thing that we should do is to mess with our configuration. So the X and the Y, we're not gonna worry about that yet. Those settings are probably pretty close to where your M2 needs to be, but we need to set our Z scaling to be used for easel. So if we scroll up here to the Gerbil console here, you'll see that there are these number values that are in here. So if you do a money sign and these little number values, we can type in what we need. So we wanna make sure that for easel, we have this setting already in here, 102, equals 472.5. If you don't see that setting in there, you want to type it. So we want to type number sign 102 equals 472.5. And then click enter and it will say, okay. 
Now, if you have Makerverse version 1.0.6 like I do, you don't have to do 3 equals 4. And if you scroll up here, you can see that's already on here where you can see that 3 equals 4 right here to invert it also for easel. That's already done for you inside of Makerverse. So as we scroll down here, the X and Y scaling, those are 85 and 86. So if these numbers ever get really messed up, you can set these numbers, number uh, money sign 85 equals 1 and money sign 86 equals 1 and start back over fresh. If something ever gets really weird, you can do that. You have control over everything inside of this console. So now that we have that value in there, we are ready to jog our machine to the center. So you also want to make sure that you change your units to a small amount. So you can either do millimeters or inches, whichever one you want to do. And then when we change this, we can start small. So we might only start with maybe like five millimeters or something like that, just to make sure that it's moving by small amounts before we change it to a large amount. Just to also to make sure that everything is functioning exactly like it should, because it should move side to side with the X and then up and down with the Y. So now that what we're going to do is we're going to move that to the middle and then by very small increments, so we might even go down to one millimeter or even less than one millimeter, we want to move our Z down to where our bit is just barely touching the wasteboard. So when it's barely touching that wasteboard, that means that it is zeroed out as well. So once we have all of these settings exactly where we want to be and we've got our machine jogged over exactly where it needs to be, then we are going to go ahead and click set home and that homes your M2. So that sets your new home value. This is very, very important. It has to have home set before you load a G code because the machine does not have home. It doesn't know where home is. So every time it gets unplugged, you have to make sure that you set home again. There's a lot of values that get saved on the board, but because your values of home can change as it moves from place to place, you want to make sure it knows exactly where home is if it loses a power connection. So we can go ahead and set home right here. And then once we have home set, we are ready to load our first cut. So I'm going to go to upload G code and I'm going to load a square. So you want your square to be at least a foot. So mine's a foot square because mine's a little bit smaller area, but you can go all the way up to maybe 800 millimeters if you want, or even a meter cut on your square. So we can see how large our area is. And I have this to where it's only going to do one pass with my bit. So it's just going to go all the way around one time. And then you are going to measure the Y and the X. Here's the thing about the first run though. I would recommend that you do a dry run first with the router off to verify that everything is working exactly like you want it to. So you can monitor it as it goes around and then if you stop it, you don't have to worry about the router bit spinning if something goes wrong. You can even leave the bricks off of your sled this first time it goes around too just to make sure that everything is exactly like it's supposed to. So if you need to move or adjust anything, then you'll be good to go. And then once it goes around that one time to kind of test and it's verified that everything kind of moves where it's supposed to, well then you can go ahead and run the actual time where you're going to cut, where right before you hit the run button, you're going to go and turn your router bit on and make sure your router bit isn't inside of your cutting surface either. Make sure that it's raised up a little bit before you hit run. So you might want to raise it up a little bit by using that jog command a millimeter or two up above your surface. It will remember where it is and move it down the appropriate amount. Now when it's done with its first cut, you're going to go ahead and turn off your router and then go ahead and jog it over to measure the cuts. So for mine, I only had a foot square, so I'm going to jog it 20 inches to the left so I can measure my square. Now that it's jogged out of the way, I want to measure from the middle of my cut for the X on one side to the other, and then same for the Y, and then I want to put those real values in the calibrate area. So in the calibrate area, we have our X scaling where we have our expected width. So for mine, my my X was just a little bit off. And I went through this, I had to ended up doing this four different times. I went through and cut four times before I got it exactly where I wanted it to be because the first time I did it, my expected width was supposed to be 12 inches, but it was only 
11.75 inches. So I had to kind of change it a little bit. And you also want to make sure that if you're in inches or millimeters, we've got this change. So I need to change this to inches here and make sure it's 12 inches by 11.75 inches. What we want is now we can jog this over. And since I jogged mine 20 inches over and I only have a one inch square cut, I can go ahead and cut another one. I can set a work offset. So I can set my new zero work position uh, for my new X. If I click zero here, this is my new work position. So this is where it's gonna start my cut. It's gonna read that this is where this new work position is so we can maximize the amount of our cutting space. So I can cut a square right next to it. Now when this square is done cutting, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to measure the real values and then compare them with the values of our g-code. And you should narrow it down after a couple cuts to where the g-code values are the exact same as your actual cuts. If you're having a whole lot of trouble, then reach out to us online. You can find us on social media or through email. Any way that you can get a hold of us will help you get your M2 calibrated. I hope this video was useful for you to calibrate your M2, and if you need any help at all, reach out to us and we'll get you going. Have fun and take care.